The spring, ABC, going all the way from the top to the bottom, has a stiffness of 500 newton meters and an unstretched length of 6 meters. Determine the displacement D of the cord from the wall when the force F equals 175 newtons is applied to the cord. If the unstretched length is 6 meters and the distance along the wall is 6 meters, what you can say is, as you're going through, with F equals 0, that spring would lie flat against the wall. As F is not equal to 0, we have some displacement D away from the wall. Once you've drawn, once you've read the problem, the next step is to draw the free body diagram. To draw the free body diagram, you have to figure out what you're drawing the free body diagram of. We're studying particles right now, and we can consider this one point here in the middle, point B, as a particle. The three forces acting on the particle are F, the spring force up, and the spring force down. We don't know the angles of these two things, but we do know that they'd be the same because of symmetry. So we can say, because of symmetry, Fs for the top spring has to be the same as Fs for the bottom spring, and phi for the top has to be the same as phi for the bottom. Now, once you have a free body diagram, we have not yet made use of all of our givens. This is a force diagram. We also want to have a geometry diagram. In this case, the geometry diagram is the triangle against the wall. If we split this by symmetry again, this top piece would be 3 meters and this bottom piece would be 3 meters. My inset piece would be D. So, blow that up a little bit. This is our angle phi. This is 3 and this is D. By the Pythagorean theorem, we can say that the new length of the spring, L prime, is D squared plus 3 squared. We can also say that any force in a spring is the spring constant times the S, where S is the change in length of the spring. Notice that in some cases you may wish to consider Fs to be a, re a, a, um, a restoring force. So in some cases you'll see a negative sign here. But given that we've drawn this spring up here in our free body diagram as pulling away from the force F, we know that our sign here is correct. Fs has to be a positive number. Otherwise, our whole free body diagram is accelerating to the left at warp speed. So, if F is equal to Ks, remember we're only dealing with half of the spring right here. We've got Fs on the top and Fs on the bottom. S is going to be the new length of the spring minus the original length of the spring, which was 3. That's half the spring. A, B, C. So, this is the same thing as square root of D squared plus 3 squared minus 3. That's our new length of the spring, and the force has a magnitude of 500 newton meters, that's your spring constant, times the change in length of the spring. That's your spring constant. We know, we were given, that F is 175 newtons. So, we can now write equations of equilibrium. We're going to want to put each of these forces in Cartesian form and write our equations of equilibrium. To do that, we need to know what phi is. Specifically from this triangle right here, you can say that cosine of phi is going to be d over L prime, the new length of the spring, or d divided by the square root of d squared plus 3 squared. That's cosine of phi. Now you could take the arc cosine of this and get an actual number for phi, but we don't need that. What we need is sine of phi and cosine of phi. Sine of phi will be 3 over L prime, for example. Now, F is minus 175 newtons in the J direction. Each force in the spring, F, each spring force is going to be our magnitude, Fs, times cosine phi in the i direction, and then plus or minus Fs sine phi in the j direction, depending upon whether you're going up or down. 
To write your equations of equilibrium, we want to take the sum of the forces in the x direction equals 0 and the sum of the forces in the y direction equals 0. To sum the forces in the x direction, we have minus 175 newtons from F and Fs cosine phi from the spring force. This is equal to 0. If we substitute what we know into that, we have 175 plus our magnitude Fs, 500 newtons per meter, times b squared plus 3 squared minus 3, that was our change in length of the spring, times cosine phi, which we just found as d over the square root of d squared plus 3 squared. This is equal to 0. This is already one equation in one unknown. We're not going to need our second equilibrium equation. This is only one equation unknown. Regrettably, this is not an equation that we can solve analytically. You're going to have to solve numerically. We'll plug it into a calculator, and you can show that d is 1.56 meters.